Come join me in my creative space where we can paint, learn, and have a few laughs. So get comfy and let's get started. Hi there, thanks for joining me today for this quick video. I'm going to be trying out this new paper called North Shore. It's 140 pound cold pressed. Although it's not cotton, it does feel like cotton. It's it's got quite a tooth to it though. So I am painting this portrait. As you can see, I've already started. So I thought I'd show you how I do hair and tackle this new paper. Um, I, re I wet the hair first and, and I try to look at the undertones and I see like in this photo that I'm going by, uh, pinky purpley undertones. So I'm going in with I, I I am painting right now with Quinn Magenta mixed with um, I believe it's called Marine Blue that I used. Um, you can get this color from many a uh, cool, cool cool blue and a cool uh, red and you'll you'll find a nice purple. And uh, so far so good with the first layer. I like the paper. It's spreading nice. It's staying pretty damp for because usually it dries in almost instantly when it's not real cotton so we'll see how this goes um, this photo that I'm going by is a book cover and it is a kind of an animated looking thing it's not a, a real photo of a, of a person and so I want it to sort of stay that way and she's from the 30s so as you can see here, my camera didn't go on right away, but it's it's okay. It's only part of the hair. I am leaving that mauve part up at the top, where it's almost white. the The reflection, the light, the reflection of the light on her hair is it's almost white. So that's where I want the mauve, mauve and pinky color to show through, and um, the part of her hair is also showing. So that I painted like her skin tone. And then later I go in with tiny strands of hair to kind of fill it in so it doesn't look like such a large gap, even though it is in the photo. So I decided I don't like that mauve too much and I put some pink. Uh, I went in with straight Quinn Magenta. And this is what I like to do with hair. I like to drop in colors. I like to remove colors. I like to make cauliflowers, which um, we often think are uh, unwanted, but sometimes you really do want them in watercolor. So here I am attempting to put on the first layer of brown. This is just Van Dyke Brown that I'm using. And I can already see, by the way the paint's going on, that it's the paper is going to give me a teeny bit of trouble, not a ton. Um, I think you could easily get used to working with this paper, but it's the first time that I've that I have, and so I wasn't sure what to expect. Now I would know what not to do and what what to do better. So once I get this first layer of brown, just like on the other side, I, you can already see to the left of her head that it's, that's, that's almost bone dry already. And, um, so I'm trying to keep it wet and it's hair. So it's okay if it's a little streaky, I don't, I'm not going for ultra realism. As I said, I want it to stay looking like an animated picture and right around her face, her hair is quite dark. So that is just pure dark Brown and it's quite thick. There's very little water in it. And I'm doing that around this side of her face and always add a few wisps of hair that always makes things look a little more natural when you're painting hair. So this is the part where now normally I go in with quite a wet brush and I just drop the water in. But soon after I put this brown on, I knew this is going to give me a little bit of trouble. And as you can see on this side, you can't see any mauve anymore. None of that purple paint is showing through anymore. So it's taking off the brown and the purple. So I go in with some of the straight Quinn magenta 
and I start adding highlights that way. So it's at a very, it's kind of a funny stage. The paint is pretty dry. It's too dry for my liking, but I mean, it's workable. And don't forget with watercolor, it, it gets quite ugly before it gets beautiful again. So I'm sticking it out. The paper has quite a tooth to it. This would be excellent paper if I think if you're doing um, a landscape and you're not using many layers that that would be a, this is a would be a great painting I, uh, paper. I got it at Walmart for $12 for the pad and there's 30 sheets. So I thought I thought that was a pretty good pretty good price and I'd never heard of it before. So now often when you're looking at somebody who has a curl or a wave, you find these very dark spaces in their hair that define the wave or the curl. And I want them because this is sort of an animated looking picture. I want it to look like a, I want it to have that exaggerated look. Um, the only thing is, is I was, I want it to do more dropping in of color, like on the right side of her head. I quite like that upper part where I dropped in the Quinn magenta and it just sort of stayed there like a, a beautiful cauliflower. But as I said, the next time I use this paper, I will definitely know what my limitations are. But don't give a, if, if you have this paper near you, I haven't seen it since, I guess everybody bought it up because it was such a good deal. And um, I am going to keep painting on it to see um, how, how it goes, if it, if it, what a landscape is like on it and so on and so forth. But as I said, it's a very rough texture. So it looks, it's a little diff tricky with her skin because you can see that texture on her skin and she looks a bit like a doll to me. So now here I'm fixing up where the top of her head is. It's dark because the part goes inward. And I'm just trying to define some of these waves and putting some additional color in her hair, to the brown, without covering up too much. As I said, I don't want to do each strand of hair. It's just it doesn't interest me to do it and it's not the look I'm going for. So the paper is, um, as I said, if you're not doing too many layers, it's not bad. It does take up your layer beneath. Now, perhaps if my painting was dry for a longer time, who knows? I will, I will try again, definitely. So as you can see, this painting's going through different stages. I'm only showing you the stages of the hair. I, I have, I, I could also extract some of the, the way I did her eyes, if anybody's interested. Um, I had a lot of fun doing this painting. I want to stylize the background. Uh, she's from the 30s, so I have to do some research before I decide exactly how I want to paint it. Well, all in all, I do like this paper. I just don't think it's great for many layers. So do give it a try if you come across it. And here she is in all her glory. When I choose a background, I may post that little video as well. I hope you enjoyed this and you get something out of it. Uh, if you did, please consider giving me a like and subscribing to the channel. And I'd love to hear from you, so leave me a comment. Don't be shy. Happy watercoloring. Bye-bye.